<laughs> it took too long to adjust to the lighting. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me go over here and welcome everybody in. We have Mel Nettie was in the room first. Oh, wait, Char of Hearts was. Yeah. Then we have Mel Nettie over here. Then Mel Nettie's back on screen this week. Thank God. And then Char of Hearts said she got, I, I like this. She's got her chocolate and her chips and she's ready for the show like a good movie. Oh, and she's going to get her main meal ready. That sounds Yay. excellent. <laughs> then we have Shanna Kraft. And we have Tommy Travels in here. And I'm sure some more will come in as we go. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get to do my TikTok. I was going to go live on TikTok again and, and kind of try to have some people come over here. But I I went and saw a movie today. I got out of the oh, house wow. and uh, went and saw a movie today. And just got back like uh, 30 minutes ago and shoveled the driveway. <laughs> so oh, a, yeah. a busy day. Um, but let's get our story going here. Let me get it up on screen. All right. I am interested. Very, very interested. Interesting. <laughs> All right. The very unsettling haunting of the Wyrick family. Mm -hmm. Dun, dun, dun. I'll let you go first. Okay. In 1988, the Wyrick family moves into a new home, which was mysteriously abandoned by the previous owners. Hello, Emily. Welcome. Thanks for coming in. It's never good when it's abandoned. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty little home, though. No. Mm-hmm. Looks older, right? Yeah. The young Wyrick family had moved to the town of Ellerslie, Georgia, after buying their first house in 1989. The town was very small, with a population of just over 3,000 people at the time. The parents, Andrew and Lisa, wanted to move to the town to have a fresh start and to be in a safe place to raise a family. Hello, Roy and Becky. Hello. I love small towns, so I understand the need to move to a small town to raise a family. Yeah. Shortly after moving in, Heidi had a new imaginary friend. Oh, boy. Happens really fast. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got Lisa, Heidi, and Andrew. This is the family. Yeah. Char of Hearts said hello to everybody. Mm -hmm. Shortly afterward, their four-year-old daughter, Heidi, begins spending time with an imaginary friend. A kindly old man named Mr. Gordy. It's a little strange. Her imaginary friend is an older man. Yeah. Andrew and Lisa didn't think much of Heidi's new imaginary friend at first. Lisa thought it was odd that Heidi would attempt to have a full conversation with this friend and eventually decided to ask Heidi about it. Can you imagine your kids just sitting there talking, like having full on conversation? Hey, Hitch Up and Toe. Hello and welcome. Heidi described her new friend as being an old man dressed in a black suit and a top hat. Lisa immediately thought it was strange that Heidi's imaginary friend wasn't a child like her. Yeah, I would think that was a little weird, too. <laughs> yeah, it's the first thing I would have thought of, like, oh, my gosh, a man? And, <laughs> unless, like, a grandpa or something had passed away recently and she was, like, replacing it with an imaginary But, mm -hmm. like, just to have an, an old man as your imaginary friend, that's weird. <laughs> 
Heidi told her mom that his name was Mr. Gordy and that they would play outside on the swing and in her room together. Wow. He just goes everywhere with her. Yeah. Now this was on um, Unsolved Mysteries. So part of these are scenes that I was able to capture. Gotcha. It, it was, yeah, like a little movie. So they made like a little um, uh, a movie out of what they had experienced. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's just weird. <laughs> He's out there right? in a suit walking around his swing. <laughs> okay. Lisa witnessed Heidi on a few occasions with her hand reaching upwards and floating in the air like she was holding an invisible person's hand. Can you imagine? <laughs> I'll be like, okay, <laughs> let, let me touch him. <laughs> show me right. where he Let me touch him. Let me see. <laughs> Please show me, kid. Um, Fire of Hearts says, be careful. Any top hat spirits or veiled spirits, it's a sign of its connection to something unseen. Oh. Um, I'll have to send Nettie what my grandson said to my daughter. Oh, yes. Please do. Oh, wow. Now Lisa would ask whose hand she was holding, and Heidi would say that it was Mr. Gordy. Heidi spoke about Mr. Gordy a lot, and this friend seemed to be around all the time. While she thought it was peculiar, peculiar... <laughs> Lisa still tried to support her daughter, assuming that she was just trying to cope with the move. I, yeah, I think I would want to think anything other than ghost. So. Yeah. <laughs> I saw him up until I was eight years old. And on everyday basic, we would sit and have conversations. And then he would take me by the hand and we would go and play on the swing. Heidi explained years later, reminiscing the time that she had no idea Mr. Gordy wasn't real when she was a kid. So as an adult, she's thinking back and she's like, oh, no, he was real. He was yeah. real. <laughs> That's so weird. That is really weird. One day, Heidi went to answer the door when the doorbell rang. Heidi saw a man with an injured hand and a blood-soaked shirt standing in the doorway. Not Mr. Gordy? Nope. Dun -dun. <laughs> Scene from The Haunting in Georgia. Hello, living the silver life. Welcome in. Hey, those are our new neighbors that we had lunch with today. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> She hurried to tell her mom that an injured man by the name of Lon was at the door. And for good reason, Lisa was very concerned. Yeah. Another First was the Gordy, now an injured man at the front door. Yeah. When Lisa gets to the door, she doesn't see any man. She's called she called Andrew and asked him to come home because she thought a man was possibly trying to hurt her family. Andrew came home, but they found no trace of the man. Dun, dun, dun. And they're both older men. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of strange. She's... Yeah, that is weird. Yeah. Hmm. Now, Lisa had a sister named Joyce who moved in right next door at the time. And Lisa told her everything that happened with Heidi and the creepy, bloodied man at the door. Joyce, the aunt. She didn't look happy in that picture. <laughs> no. Joyce offered to help figure out who lived in the house before the family, and Lisa liked the idea. Joyce called the real estate agent and asked for the previous owner's information. Dun, 
Thank you, Ford Man, aka mm -hmm. Kenneth Oaks. I really appreciate that. Oh, um, Living the Silver Life said, what did I miss before the creepy bloody man appearing at the door? So the family moved into the house. And as soon as they moved into the house, the little girl started seeing her imaginary friend named Mr. Gordy. Gordy. And, like playing with him and holding hands with him and everything. <laughs> yep. And she was roughly like four years old when she started seeing him. Yeah. yeah. So Joyce discovered that the previous homeowner was named Kelly. She called Kelly and got together with her to learn about the house. Kelly told her that the man named James Gordy had owned the house before her, but had passed away in 1974. <laughs> I'm out. Thank you. <laughs> My kids see ghosts. I see dead people. <laughs> No. He's pushing her on a swing outside. Hmm. He seems harmless. Like, yeah, he seems friendly, but still, the fact my kids seeing dead people, oh, scary. Oh, I know. Oh, good, I didn't miss much, but yuck. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, sorry. Hold on, let me find where we were. So easy to click the button and end up back. I know. I experienced that at that time. <laughs> do, 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 do. Sorry, everybody. Give me one second. <laughs> da, 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 bloody man and Joyce, previous owners. Okay, there it is. That's out? the one. Yeah. Right here. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Joyce told Lisa what she learned, and Lisa began to panic, realizing that Gordy was the name Heidi's the name of Heidi's imaginary friend. Lisa decided to sit down with Heidi and explain to her that Mr. Gordy had died. Mm -hmm. Not just dead people, but bloody ones, right? right. <laughs> uh, so sorry. So sorry. <laughs> Let me know if you yawned. After I did. Let me know if it's <laughs> on that yawn. Um, hello to everyone that is saying hello to me in the chat. I'm typing on a tablet. Kenneth says hello to everybody. All right. Tony Travel says, oh, maybe this will have a twist where it turns out the mom was dead this whole time, too. <laughs> oh, Keisha, thank you so much. <laughs> you made it just in time. We're just getting into yeah. the good stuff. So the family moves into a house and mm -hmm. the little girl starts seeing a imaginary friend named Mr. Gordy, yep. the aunt who lives next door. Oh, and she answered the door to a bloody man at the front door. Um, mm -hmm. Nobody else can see these, these people that the daughter is seeing. And um, the sister that lives next door, the aunt that lives next door went and found out that the person that owned the house prior to them um, or originally owned the house, his name was Mr. Gordy, the name of the imaginary yeah. friend. So we're all cut up. Yep. All right. Hey, Thrifty Angela. Hello and Hi. welcome. All right. We read this one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There he There's, is. He's even in his suit. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> he looks nice, though. I mean, yeah. if he smiled. Yeah. For some reason, when she learned of this, Heidi asked to visit his grave. Lisa decided to bring her, and somehow Heidi seemed to know exactly which grave was his. And she couldn't read at the time. That's so weird. He was probably holding her hand and took her right there. Probably. I was I was picturing a little something more gory, like his Were hands you? out of the ground. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right here, little girl. Like this, grabbing a... <laughs> <laughs> that was probably his funeral suit. That's true. Yeah, it could... All right. 
James Gordy, 1888 to 1974. Is that what that says? Yeah, it's kind of hard to read it on there. But... Lisa calls Kelly and asks her to bring photos to the house. Kelly hands a few photos to Heidi and she points out a man in one of the photos and said, that was the injured man who came to the door. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Kelly said that the man name was Lon and he was her uncle. She said that Lon had lost his hand in a cotton gin accident and died in 1957 from cancer. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, it's up and toes that I didn't recognize him without the top hat. The top hat. <laughs> funny. So this is Lon, the uncle. Mm-hmm. Andrew and Lisa didn't know what to do with this information. They decided to distract Heidi with a new dog, and she loved the dog. However, the dog would stare off into corners or hallways and start barking and growling. Strange. See, my yeah. dogs would do that crap in this house. They'll be standing there, and they'll just start barking for no reason. And I'm like, is someone here? Like, I'll be now, at home do alone. they do that in the creepy room or in that... That room that you found. Well, they're not down there very often in the basement, but yeah. they'll do it when we're up here. It's happened twice so badly that I have actually called um, the boys to come home, somebody to come home and check the house um, to make sure nothing was in here. Oh, my um, gosh. So, gosh. Yeah. It's been pretty bad twice on me. Mm. Uh, Keisha said animals always know. Yeah. True. Happy place. Hello and welcome. All right. Animals sense that stuff. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. The family said the dog would do this often and make the parents uncomfortable because it seemed like the dog was growling at nothing. It wasn't long after they got the dog that it ran away and was never found. Jennifer said such a sweet story so far. It it, it does seem like the, the man yeah. is just like the best friend of the little girl. And it seems very, very sweet so far. Um, Boxer we had before Darby used to go stand at the hallway and just stare at the back at the bathrooms and bedrooms. Yeah, see that stuff creeps mm. me out because I know dogs. They yeah, got they better sense than we do. <laughs> yep. As time went on, the parents also began to experience supernatural occurrences. They heard objects move and doors open and close. See, that's when the ghosts are getting a little too comfortable, which, you, you know, like they done mm -hmm. settled in, they're comfortable, they start moving stuff. It's like, you know what? You're making yourself a little too comfortable here. <laughs> yeah. It's not your house anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Roy and Becky said... Those two might be the good ghosts, but could have a bad one in the mix. Uh, yeah. Happy Place said, yep, it creeped me out. Charheart said, never good when an animal won't stay around. Very yeah. true. That dog was like, I'm out. See you later. I'm out of here. There was one day when Heidi was playing with a real friend in the living room as Lisa watched. Lisa said that a chair was pulled out by an invisible force and flipped it over as if it was thrown. That would freak me out. Uh, Darby has randomly growled or barked, but she's a goofball, so not sure if something's there or if she's just being herself. It's funny. Um, our dog growls at me. I must be a cow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, my too. It's it's happened in the bedroom both times, and they have gone to the door and just gone absolutely nuts. Like oh, someone, wow. it it had me afraid that someone was like had come in the house that didn't belong in here. Like a door was left unlocked or something like that. But both times there was 
nothing out there that people came home and, and checked for me. There was nothing out there. So Keisha said, nope, I'm gone. I'm gone. <laughs> I'll be with the dog that ran away. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go find the dog and stay with it. <laughs> On some nights, Lisa claimed to hear voices speaking over her bed. She said these voices whispered about her saying her name. Oh, no. That would creep me out. I'm like, no way. At least they weren't talking behind her back. They were talking <laughs> in front of her face. They were talking in front of her. <laughs> uh, you could have something attached if you're being growled at. Mm. Ooh. Hitch up and toe. Be careful. You're being growled at. All right. Uh, Roy and Becky said, I'd leave everything and be gone. Thrifty Angela says, have I allowed? Yeah. I'm going, I'm going with the dog. dog. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> oh, hell no. I'd be gone for sure. <laughs> All right. Something sinister comes. Dun, dun, dun. A creepy, <laughs> creepy. Now, this is also a scene from the movie. So. <laughs> Uh, Lisa decided to ask her pastor about what was going on in her house. She told him that she thought they had ghosts in their house. The pastor told her that ghosts weren't real, but the demons were. That's just Mr. kind of strange to me. Yeah, I've never heard that only demons are real. And yeah. Mr. Gordy seems pretty innocent. Uh, Char of Hearts said, I only had one time the cat jumped after growling in an old house I grew up. Mom got a preacher to bless the house, and we had much less malicious encounters. Mm. Oh, enter creepy guy. <laughs> uh, when you commune with spirits too long, it always invites more spirits. I believe that. Yeah. Yep. Moving wasn't an option and the family ended up staying in the house for many more years when lisa got pregnant with her second child heidi started telling her parents that something bad was in the house you know the kid that's been talking to dead people this whole time time to move when the yeah. kid that's been talking to dead people says there's something bad in the house time to go <laughs> skirt skirt time to leave <laughs> <laughs> She referred to this bad thing as a dark figure that would appear as a dark shadow in her room. Heidi said the dark figure would make her room colder and said that the dark figure had pulled her hair. Yeah, that's not good. Don't yank my hair. Don't be mm -hmm. yanking my hair. That's the one thing. That, don't yank my hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't yank my hair. <laughs> I will punch you. <laughs> <laughs> now, Heidi woke up to find three deep scratches on her face. Despite everything else, Andrew and Lisa assumed Heidi had managed to do this in her sleep. Why would they assume that? I know. Because they don't want to see what's actually going on. Um, yeah. Our dog Luna growls at a wall in our house, but there's nothing there and our other dog doesn't. <laughs> Oh, maybe one of your dog has senses and the other one doesn't. Just saying. Yeah, possible. Pictures from the movie Haunting in Georgia. Until the following morning, when Andrew, <laughs> that ghost said, you didn't believe me. <laughs> Until the following morning when Andrew woke up to find scratches on his side and his face, Heidi told her dad that it was the dark figure that had done this to them. Um, that's odd, Hitch Up and Toe. As a parent, I'd be, oh no, we are out of here. Mm -hmm. uh, bust through that wall and see what's in there, Hitch Up and Toe. Yeah, can you video that? Yeah. I want to know if there's a body in your wall. <laughs> oh, no. no. <laughs> there are bones in there, hitch up and toe. Uh, 
There you go. In 1994, Heidi's sister Jordan was born. Later that same year, her parents decided to visit Dr. Roll, who was a, is it parapsychosis? I think it's parapsychologist. And about Mr. Gordy. Thank you. Alright, uh, maybe it doesn't like that the dog, maybe it doesn't like that dog and aggravates it. Hmm. Oh, yeah, the spirit. Maybe it doesn't like the yeah. dog and then it aggravates the dog. Dr. Roll brought Heidi a bunch of pictures, and once again, she was able to pick out Mr. Gordy from the images without hesitation. Despite this, Dr. Roll told her parents that she was suffering from delusion. She's suffering from delusions? No, she just sees dead people. Yeah. Everybody got scratched. Yeah. Her hand is up in the air. <laughs> it wasn't long after this that the media learned about the Wyrick home. A reporter drove out to the house and claimed to get an awful feeling from the house. Um, maybe the dog doesn't like the color of the paint on that particular wall. <laughs> Shannon Craft says, quack. <laughs> um, let's see. He was so off put by the feeling that he left before speaking with the family. The community learned of the family and their troubles and Heidi got a lot of unwanted attention. Heidi's I'm sure. A little girl, you know. Yeah, a little girl seeing dead people, I'm sure would attract a lot of attention. Yeah. Now, Lisa and Joyce remembered that their mother used to talk about seeing people and hearing voices. They said that they thought she was just messing with them or having fun, but now they believe that maybe seeing spirits ran in the family. I think that stuff is genetic. I think mm -hmm. it ran in the family. Well, the mom is beautiful. Isn't she? Yeah. She's very pretty. After the discussion, Lisa and Joyce said that they began to experience more paranormal activity. Lisa found her daughter, Jordan, speaking to someone when she was also about the age of three. Wow. They just got a house full of guests. Ghost yeah. guests. Yeah. Yeah. Then Jordan told her that she was playing with a new friend who was a little girl. Heidi told her mom that this little girl was friendly, but this didn't make Lisa feel any better. <laughs> I'm sure she's probably like, <laughs> not another one. <laughs> another one? Where'd this one come from? Yeah. Uh, definitely tends to be true running in the family. Yeah. Dr. Rule was called again and now believed that seeing spirits ran in the family. He called a well-known psychic and asked her to come to the home. See, I wouldn't have called that doctor back. Right. I wonder if this is where they got the idea for that movie. There, um, Nettie, you said there was a movie, right? Yeah, and that movie is actually is Haunting in Georgia is what it's called, and it's based on the family. On this family. Oh. oh, you mean the idea for the movie The Sixth Sense, where the little boy says, I see dead people. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, the little girl tends to be the demon. Ugh. Yeah, they say that. They say that demons disguise themselves as children a lot. Yeah. It should. At least this one and Mr. Cordy are nice. Not like the dark guy, right? Or the one yeah. that's sitting above the mom talking about her. In front of yeah. her face. Mm. If I was laying there and something above me was saying my name and talking about me, how would you even go to sleep? 
How would you fall asleep at night? Waking imagine. up with scratches all over you? Yeah. Is it your turn or mine? I can't remember. Uh, it's my turn. Okay. The, psych the psychic in instantly sensed a little girl in the home, as well as a spirit that she believed to be Mr. Gordy. Psychic also said that there were three dark spirits in the house. Seems about right. Yeah. The family wanted more answers and called for a second psychic to come. The second psychic said there were three demonic entities in the home. So they're both saying the same thing. Yeah. She said that one of the demons was trying to live in Jordan's room. She said there, there was a second demon trying to attach itself to Heidi, but that a good spirit was fighting it off. Which is probably Mr. Gordy. Probably. Um, very possible, Thrifty Angela. Seems this story was around the early 90s and the sixth sense came out in 99. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of alcohol to sleep. That'll help. Yeah. Alcohol and maybe some of that wacky tobacco to knock you out. Because <laughs> right. you got demons and ghosts and your kids are talking to the ghost and seeing the ghost, but you can't see them. You're going to probably need a little more than alcohol. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sling that Bible. That's true. Yeah. Bible and holy water. <laughs> Just oh, sleep yeah. with a, a sheet. <laughs> like a sheet covered in holy water over the top of you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't actually know that info off the top of my head. I Googled it. <laughs> um, probably Mr. Gordy is the good guy in this story. The little girl doesn't seem to be too upset by all of this. Mm -hmm. I never heard of a haunting in Georgia. I have to look it up. Mr. Gordy got his work for him if he's the only good spirit, right? Yeah. Keisha's laughing. Mm -hmm. All right. They also believed this good spirit to be Mr. Gordy. The psychic said that the third demon would travel between the living room and the wall over the parents' bed. Yeah. Oh, and that's then they stopped to talk to them over the bed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That holy water sheet thing's looking better and better. <laughs> the psychic told them that they're... There was a portal in the family's living room between the spirit world and the real world. Wow, portals aren't good. No. Uh, Char of Hearts said, I bet that holy water and Bible combo would keep them away more often than not. Jennifer said, poor baby. Thrifty Angela said, I feel bad for Mr. Gordy now. Right? Because that was like yeah. his original home. And here he made friends with the little girl, and now he's having to fight away all the demons. So yeah. that is sad for Mr. Gordy. She told them that the demonic entities could find their way through the portal and would not want to leave. She said the portal was in the fireplace and that everything that had come through was sticking around. Nope, nope. Time to close up the fireplace. Mm -mm. Feeling helpless, the family asked their pastor to come and cleanse the house of evil spirits. The pastor came to the house, but it didn't seem to work as the family had hoped. Um, Happy Place said that Haunting in Connecticut 2, Ghost of Georgia, is the full title of the movie. If you mm -hmm. guys want to check the movie out, Thrifty Angela said, I'd be moving. Mm -hmm. And uh, Roy and Becky said, close that portal ASAP. Yeah. One night, Heidi was awakened up by a very bad feeling. She sensed a dark presence at the end of her bed. I think I mess with them when they're sleeping. Be brave, ghost. Mm -hmm. Get them while they're awake. She screamed for her parents. They ran 
in to discover that the evil spirit had yanked her off the bed and was holding her upside down over the floor. It was at this time the family decided to leave the house. Get they out. just now decided to leave? <laughs> they just now decided to leave? <laughs> I guess Mr. Gordy kept him nice and protected for as long as he could. Yeah. Um, Nomadic Hippie said, so late. Sorry, was at a roadside attraction in Ohio, but here now. Thanks, Hippie, for coming in. Yeah, hi, Hippie. Hope you're, hope you're driving safe out there on these snowy roads. Mm -hmm. uh, too many demons attaching. I seen that movie that they said the girl was a shoe fly. Uh, she said, Keisha said, now yeah. they leave. Uh, living the silver life, finally. Yeah. <laughs> She just has to be hanging upside down, you know? Yeah. Okay, we're gone. Dad has scratches. Mom hears them talking yeah. about her. Daughter has scratches. They all have imaginary friends, but we're going to wait until the child <laughs> is hanging upside down. Yeah. <laughs> Shanna says, about time. Yeah. Just now, all casual like. Uh, well, I think getting yanked out of my bed would probably be my last straw, too. <laughs> <laughs> now as an adult Heidi is still seeing spirits she told a media outlet I can sense when it's an evil presence or if it's a good presence if I can see if I can sense evil you wouldn't believe the feelings you can get I've been literally sick to my stomach Hmm. That's Heidi as an adult. Mm -hmm. She's beautiful too. She looks like her mom, huh? Yeah. Despite her encounters with the paranormal, Heidi went on to live a seemingly normal life. She got married and had kids of her own. After all the media attention her story received, Heidi was able to connect with a multitude of people who share similar experience of the supernatural. Uh, where are they moving to next? Elm Street? <laughs> <laughs> and Roy and Becky said, Elm Street runs into our driveway back in Indiana. Oh, no. At least you can see Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. I, I wonder if the house still stands. I wonder if new people bought it. Mm. Um, here's Lisa and Andy and Heidi, Jordan and Joyce, the aunt. Beautiful family. Aren't they? Yeah, I wonder if the house is still there. I wonder if the next people that moved in had paranormal activity or if Mr. Gordy yeah. fought everybody away. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah, because I'm thinking, you know, when Callie was living there and her uncle was lawn, she didn't say anything about experiencing anything there, you know. And I don't know if it's because of when they moved into the house that since I Heidi had abilities, if that's what, you know, attracted them and they came to her. But you would think with a portal being in a fireplace that they would be coming and going. You know, because how does a portal get there? Yeah, it? I would think you would have to close that out somehow. Yeah. And and I guess there's a lot of ways that, from what I, I, I'm not an expert on portals by any means, but I've heard that portals can be there from having mirrors directly across mm -hmm. from each other can cause a portal. Yeah, I've heard know. that if your house is built on like a burial ground or something like that. that or seances can, too. Doesn't that open them as well? Yeah. Seances. I've heard there's a couple different yeah. ways that the portals can happen. I doubt that Mr. Gordy was having a seance. So maybe his right. house was built on land because it was where they lived was a small town. So mm -hmm. maybe there were bones from like back in, you know, caveman days or Indian days that, you know, um, that that's what happened. Um, they all look alike. Yes. Yeah. They very much all look alike. Yeah. That is a strong family gene on the mom's side. Um, 
they'd have to tell future buyers. Yeah, I, I wonder about that because you do have to tell if somebody passes away in the home and you sell the home. So I mm-hmm. wonder if they have to tell that there's ghosts. Yeah. Um, oh, it just jumped up on me. Jennifer said, great story. Thanks for Thank sharing. You. Yeah, thank you, Nettie, for putting that together. It was a really mm-hmm. good story. Thank you. I'd say it caused, it's because of daughter's special ability. You think the portal came because of the daughter's special ability? Or because the lady that lived there before abandoned the house. So oh, I wonder. I thought about that. Yeah, I wonder if it was already there before because they said that the house was just abandoned. abandoned. Yeah, from the yeah. previous owners. Yeah, but and what I what? didn't um, include is Andrew or Andy, her her dad, um, passed away in 2012. Um, he was in his 40s, mid 40s, if I'm not mistaken. There wasn't anything in there um, stating why or how he passed away, but they were they were basically. Um, it just seemed like it had to do with what took place, you know, as far as all these entities coming and going, but um, it was strange because he just ended up passing away, you know, and that's the only one that I found that, that passed out of the family. You know what? And we were talking about how portals get opened. And I said, Mr. Gordy didn't seem like the type that would, you know, mess with the darks, but there was the previous owner that lived at the house. That wasn't Mr. Gordy. She lived there after Mr. Gordy died. So maybe she was messing with a little bit of black magic or something. Yeah. And she, she wouldn't probably disclose that if she. Yeah. Uh, living in, living the silver life said, but maybe when Mr. Jordy came through the portal, he left it open for others to come through. Possibility. My older brother lived in a house where devil worshipers lived in the house. Finally got tore down. See that? Mm-hmm. That's yeah. creepy. Um, we were told the real estate people only have to tell if ask. Hmm. Uh, but the gift of the daughters drawed more out. Yeah, I believe that. I definitely believe that because if if you can't sense them or feel them or any of that, then I doubt that. Because like, okay, so Bulldog doesn't believe in any of this stuff. We are complete opposites. But Bulldog mm-hmm. doesn't believe in any of this stuff. And he doesn't sense or feel or see or any. He doesn't anything, right? Whereas I am like, oh, what was that? Or, oh. I seen that or you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Uh, the one picture I have at the bed and breakfast where I took it with my phone and it showed the outline of a child by the uh, horse. horse. Yeah. That was the only thing that made him go, hmm, I can't explain that. Not even uh, the statue falling over. He didn't. Yeah. Then, yeah. The statue. Well, the horse fell over too. The horse was standing oh, up. Yeah, because it was the, leaning. Yeah, yeah. And then we saw the little kid and then and then it fell over. So that was the only thing that kind of made him go, I don't really have an explanation for that. Um, but yeah. yeah, most stuff he doesn't feel it, see it, nothing. Um, and I, I thought, you know, even if a house is torn down, it's not going to close the portal unless you physically... You have to do some kind of seance to close it, you know. So it just kind of just lets them run wrap it. Yeah, I and feel, if you re- you know? if you were to rebuild on that same property, I would assume that the portal yeah. would come to the next house. Uh, Keisha said, "Yes, very good story, and thank you." Thank you. Shanna said, "Oh, that's what Shanna said about the real mm-hmm. estate agent." Um, I hated that house. My grandma wouldn't go inside. Mm. Um, I don't blame her. Nope. I don't blame her either. Mm-hmm. Uh, believe it varies by state what a realtor must dec- disclose. Yeah, I think it varies, but I think the death thing is cross the board. I could be wrong, but yeah. I think that if someone dies in the home, that has to be. Or it might be if there was a crime, like a murder or something. I don't mm-hmm. know. There's something about death, and it's, and I think that's across the board, but I don't know about ghost. Um, lots of things happen in there, cold spots. Oh, I can imagine if there was devil yeah. worshiping. Yeah. Sometimes the one that is in denial is the carrier of spirits and thus 
blinded like someone carrying MRSA won't have the symptoms. Char of Hearts, I believe you're correct with that 100% because yeah. if Hippie's still in here, he'll verify. Um, Bulldog started kind of <laughs> poking at things and saying stuff that that we didn't, I didn't know what it meant. Bulldog knew what it meant. And he was saying some stuff he shouldn't have been saying in a haunted place. <laughs> and that's when all the stuff kicked off and we were hearing stuff that was just like full sentence, making sense, scaring the crap out of hippie and I. <laughs> so. Adventures uh, in Xanadu. <laughs> hey there, Adventures in Xanadu. <laughs> Bulldog nuts. Yeah, he is nuts. Yeah. Now, was that before or after the little leg started moving on the doll? Was that like a... That was before. So when Bulldog yeah. went there, he said that he... He said Satan or... He said the name. I remember He said that. Satan yeah. or devil or something, but he <laughs> said it in the like biblical term, which yeah. I didn't even know. And yeah. he was jokingly doing it. But as soon as he did it, stuff kicked off and things yeah. started happening. So it was pretty creepy. Uh, boo. <laughs> this world is filled with unexplainable stuff. Hi, BB and Nettie. Some <laughs> people just aren't in tune with stuff and that's okay too. Okay. I yep. agree. <laughs> um, Indiana, a death or a burial of people has to be told. Okay. Um, the owners couldn't keep renters, so they tore it down. Not sure if they did anything to shut portals. Shut portals. Yeah. Is that a thing you have to disclose a death in your home? Um, that's what we we're kind of mm -hmm. talking about. I, mm -hmm. I, I'd be interested. Maybe I'll look that up and come back with the, the info next week. Um, kind of the laws on that. But I know here in Missouri, you have to disclose it. I know in California... I'm pretty sure you have to disclose it. So I don't know. Um, yep. He's to blame. <laughs> uh, Tommy Travels is saying hi to Hippie. All right, Becky says, sometimes you need to do your research on a property. I fully believe you should do your research on anything. Like, um, yeah. Like even cars, to be honest with you, there's a lot of stuff that happens in cars and then cars get resold. And mm -hmm. if you think about it, that car is coming back to your house. You're traveling in that car. So if something happened in that car and there's a ghost in that car, it's going to attach to you. So I anything yeah. that I buy, I'm going to research. <laughs> And it seemed like with this family, you know, they've had it all their life because she was talking about her mom experienced it. You know, and as kids, they were just thinking that she was messing with them and they weren't taking it seriously. Yeah. I saw well, I Christine. I... <laughs> yeah, I can tell it too. Oh, is that, um, are you <laughs> meaning the one that starts fires? Or who's, who's Christine? It's the car. Oh. Christine is the one where the car was possessed. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 Um, three men have died in the house I live in now. All mm. in the same room. Tell me y'all don't Ooh. sleep in that room. Um, I don't think there are any spirits. The men, my dad, by suicide. I am so sorry. I'm sorry, Sharon. My stepdad, by cancer. My husband by cancer. Yeah. Oh, Shana, I want to wrap my arms around you. I know. Um, I think that tearing down a home gets rid of portals. You never hear about haunted vacant lots. Yeah. Um, actually, well, the land is haunted. It could be. Yeah. Um, well, and if they rebuild on it, I wonder if it would cause haunting in the new home. Uh, that's the car. Also, the movie The Car. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry, Nitty said it just as I typed it. Oh, you're all good. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but I know, like, okay, this is gonna get gory for a second. I apologize, but I know, um, like, I've heard several different stories around here where people have passed away in the car, and then the car gets sold 
uh, whether it be a heart attack when they were in a parking lot, a drug overdose, whatever. A friend of mine, her aunt overdosed in the car and died. And um, they sold the car. They sold, you know, they had to get their money out of it. So they sold the car. Yeah. But she died in the car. Like, I, mm -hmm. <laughs> I would want to know that. So I always ask about anything that I'm purchasing, even like a couch or a bed or something. I want to know <laughs> where it came from. Yeah. Before, before bringing it into my house. Yeah. Um, a lot of times it's if the seller has knowledge of the event, sometimes there is a time limit on the event. Sometimes the realtor says, don't tell me if I don't know, I'm not liable. Mm. Um, yikes. Only men die in there. Could just be a spirit of death, not a ghost. Could just be that spot. Okay, guys, got to go or got to run got to gather mm -hmm. up some crap for jesse y'all have a good evening you have a good evening mm -hmm. too happy place i did sleep in that room now i'm sleeping in daisy since the end of september yeah that would be i don't know my grandma passed away in the house that i lived in for 20 something years uh -huh. she passed away in the room that i slept in and i felt comfort i never felt anything weird i just yeah. felt comfort but my grandma was around don't get me wrong because she knocked pictures of my sister off the wall because she did not like my sister and <laughs> when i needed to pay a bill and i had been living in that house for a long time money just appeared one day so mm. grandma was around but she didn't, it didn't feel bad or yeah. like she was constantly there it just felt like she was there when needed uh, Charf Hart said that house I told you about got destroyed and when someone burned it never had anything else happen. Oh, okay. Well, I wonder if burning it causes the portal to close. Yeah. Um, I had a 78 Cutlass Supreme. I called it Christine. That car almost killed me and mom a few times. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, we live on the same land as the house that burned. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Wow, a money ghost. <laughs> Have I told that story or do I need to retell it real quick? Um, it's real short. Basically, I mean, I was young when I got married uh -huh. and I was pregnant and my my ex-husband, my husband at the time, got laid off work right when we got married. Um, so we had nothing. Uh, but we lived in my grandma's house. It was, it was uh, it's a whole thing. But we lived there and I had an electric bill. And my electric bill was a little over $200 and I was due for a disconnect. And I had no way to come up with the money. I didn't know where, I mean, I knew I needed to feed my kids and my, my baby yeah. needed formula and diapers. And that was where my money was going before the electric bill, you know? And um, we had this China cabinet that was my grandma's and I had been in it many times since my grandma passed because there were two drawers on it, just two small drawers. And my mom came and collected all of my grandma's priceless things that she wanted and took them down to her house. So we had cleared out the China cabinet and I had been in it many times over and there was nothing in these drawers. Um, and then when I ran into this problem of not being able to pay the electric bill, I had remembered that my grandma supposedly had hid money some in some books and stuff in the house and so i was like well i guess i can look around just to see you know yeah so praying and looking and just seeing if i could find something and i went in those two drawers that i had been in a million times and right on the top it wasn't hidden nothing it was just sitting right on the top was the exact amount i needed to pay the electric bill in cash oh, it was wow. just sitting there and i was like that was not there a hundred percent that was not there. And my husband at the time could not explain it either. We were both just like, I I mean, it's the exact amount. So I think grandma wants us to pay the bill. <laughs> hey, I, thank you, grandma. <laughs> so we paid it. We paid the bill. Yeah. It was just us in the house. There was no one else in the house. It was just wow. me, my husband at the time, and 
um, the baby. So there was no way anybody else could have put it there. So it was, I think that was what led me to truly a hundred percent believe in spirit world. Yeah. All right. Um, I've heard that the new thing now is when someone gets a shiny new semi truck, they turn out to be haunted. <laughs> haunted okay, yeah, be. <laughs> <laughs> my brother was a mechanic and said there was nothing wrong with that car. And my mom said, be yes. mm. <laughs> yeah. said, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> I lived in an apartment once that a stripper had rented before me. She didn't die there, but I would find a couple dollar bills <laughs> on the table once in a while. Uh, grandma was looking out for you for sure. She yeah. was. She definitely was. Uh, <laughs> she wanted to be able to read her books and couldn't see if the lights were off. <laughs> Probably. No, my grandma <laughs> was like one of the most ornery, tiny little, <laughs> like she was four foot 11, super skinny, ornery as hell, uh, mean as could be. She liked me though. I, I was good, but uh, mm -hmm. she was real angry at my sister. And the other thing that happened was we had pictures, family pictures in the hallway, all over the hallway. Only the pictures of my sister fell and they broke oh. and they were not able to be hung back up again. So it was like grandma was saying, I've had enough. I've seen right. enough. <laughs> <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> uh, you probably should have sanitized your hands after handling those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too All right. Well, thank you, Nettie, for another wonderful story. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Yeah, I had a great time. I'm so happy to be here with you. And look forward to another Sunday. Me too. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And I hope you have a wonderful week ahead of you. Wishing you all much kindness and much love. We're sending love your way. Thank <laughs> Bye, you. Bye, everyone. Bye.